In this video, I want to provide an example of how we can use Monte Carlo simulation in order to demonstrate that there is omitted variable bias. Okay, so the idea, as with all Monte Carlo simulations, is that first of all, we define and sort of configure our population process. So the idea here is that we're going to generate some independent variable x1, which is going to be given by some sort of randomly uh, or normal random variable. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to generate another variable x2, which is just equal to x1 times some sort of small number, so perhaps times 0 0.25, plus some sort of random, um, normal random error as well. So the idea here is that I'm generating a second independent variable which is correlated with the first one, but it's not perfectly correlated because we've got this sort of random um, error component to it as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these two independent variables to generate a set of y. So y here is going to be equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus some error which we're going to have a sort of a random normal random error rather as well on the end of y. So it's not perfectly determined by x1 and x2. So all of these things together define our sort of population and our population processes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these population processes to generate samples. And we're going to generate a number of different samples. So we're going to generate sample one all the way through to, I think we're going to do 100 different samples. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use least squares estimators on each of these samples in order to come up with the least squared estimates of beta 1. So we're going to be looking at beta 1 hat. But in contrast to the previous examples, what we're actually going to do is we're going to estimate a regression model on each of these samples, which is just y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times uh, x1 plus some error epsilon. So importantly, we're omitting the second important independent, independent variable. So we're omitting x2 from this relationship here. And because we omit x2 from our relationship, and because we know that x2 by construction is correlated with x1, when we look at the sampling distribution for all of these different samples, so we look at the histogram of all the different frequencies of the values which have come out from our estimation, then we're going to expect some bias. So the true value of beta 1 might be something like this in the middle of our sort of um, domain here, and the y-axis here is the frequency. But because we've omitted this important factor, our sampling distribution is actually going to be skewed actually upwards of beta 1. So it's not going to be an unbiased estimator. And it's not going to be unbiased because of the fact that essentially within this error term epsilon here, implicitly we're including x2. And since x2 is correlated with x1, that means that we've got an endogenous explanatory variable. And because we have this endogenous explanatory variable, our estimates are both going to be unbiased, oh sorry, biased rather, not unbiased, they're going to be both biased and inconsistent. And we're going to demonstrate both of these properties um, using a simulation in MATLAB. So here's my MATLAB program. So basically what we're doing here is we're first of all generating our independent variables and then we're using those independent variables to generate a um, dependent variable y. So we know exactly the processes which have um, been put together to generate y and we also know all the parameters in our estimation. So we're, the value of alpha I've chosen is 1, beta is 1, or beta 1 is 1 and beta 2 is 1 as well. So we know exactly what we should be getting. So if I run this simulation and we look at the sampling distribution, we can see straight away that the sampling distribution is not centered around the true parameter value of 1. It's actually upward of 1. So if we run this again, we should hopefully get a similar sort of thing. I hope you can sort of see that it's not just a fluke that we got a sampling distribution that was all the way over to the right. It's actually the case that our estimator is itself biased. So what happens as I increase the sample size? So if I increase the sample size from 100 to 1,000, then what are we going to see? Well, the only thing that's changed here is that essentially our sampling distribution has become narrower, but it hasn't actually moved over closer towards the true parameter value of 1. So it looks like our estimator is both biased and it's inconsistent. To prove this a little bit further, if I increase the sample size up to 10,000, 
again, we should the only change we should expect to see is that we have some sort of narrowing of the sampling distribution, and there should be no movement over to, back towards the true parameter value of one. So running that, we can see a further narrowing of the sampling distribution. So I hope that this has demonstrated to you that in the circumstance where we omit an important variable from our regression, that means that our OLS estimates are both or estimators are both biased and inconsistent. And we've demonstrated that using Monte Carlo simulation.